Hello, hello, hello. My name is Becca Worthington. I'm a children's librarian at Imaginon, um, one of the many branches of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library. And I am so excited today to be doing our parent lunch and learn in honor of Dia. Dia is short for Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros, which is the Day of the Children, Day of the Book. And that is something that we celebrate every April for the whole month and try and incorporate as many multicultural programs as we possibly can. And so today's parent lunch and learn is gonna be talking about multicultural books for all ages. And so I will say by all ages, I'm taking that a little bit liberally because all ages, I just mean ages zero to 11, because those are the ages that I work with. Um, but they are definitely books that you can enjoy as a whole family, even though they're intended for a younger audience. Uh, today, we're going to focus on picture books and chapter books. Um, and there is such a wealth of material that we won't begin to scratch the surface of multicultural books today, but I'm here to give you a handful of books to get you start started. Um, by multicultural books, that just means books that are intended to expose children to diverse characters, cultures, histories, and concepts through fiction and nonfiction. And today we're all talking about fiction. We're going to start off with our picture books. And so I thought that the first book that we would share is Say Hello by Rachel Isadora. This is one of my absolute favorites to use at my multicultural story times for ages zero to five. It's a really good toddler and pre-K book. Um, it follows Carmelita and her mama and their dog Manny on a visit through the streets of New York City to visit their abuelita Rosa. And on the way, they say buenos dias to the bodega man. They say konnichiwa at the Japanese restaurant, bonjour at the patisserie, al salam alaikum at the halal butcher, and so much more. It's a really nice way to introduce a lot of languages very simply to a crowd or to a single reader. And speaking of Rachel Isadora, she has written so many books. We could practically do the whole program on just her stuff, but we are not going to do. But I do want to focus on a few. I just want to say good night um, is a very sweet toddler story about a girl in an African village who's just not ready to go to bed yet. And so she has to say goodnight to everything around her. And Old Mikamba had a farm, as you can imagine, it is meant to be sung to the tune of Old MacDonald, but it features African farm animals. So kids can roar with the lions and bellow with the rhino and whinny with the zebra and um, honk with the wildebeest and more. And Rachel Isadora also has, for a little bit older kids, kindergarten through second or third grade, um, she has reinterpreted classic fairy tales in African art. Um, and you can see some examples here, Rapunzel, Princess and the Pea, Hansel and Gretel, and more done with her beautiful cut paper collage and set in Africa. So those are fun cultural retellings. This is a new book. It's only a couple months old. It's called When the Sky Glows. It's by Nell Cross Beckerman, and the pictures are by David Litchfield. Some of my favorite illustrations I've ever come across, and it just features times when the sky glows all around the world. Um, it features lightning storms, rainbows, solar eclipses, full moons, volcanic eruptions, mating fireflies, meteor showers, and auroras. And as you can see, you can read just the large text, um, and there is more text than just the sky glows, even though those are the examples I showed you. But uh, there's also on each spread that paragraph down at the bottom. So if you have an older kid that wants to dig into some more science, then you can really get into that. And it travels all around the world in that book. There's another book called Are Your Stars Like My Stars? It's a really simple color book that, you know, red, purple, yellow, learning your colors, but it does it through the lens of how kids around the world might see things differently. We look at the world every day, you and me. Do we see the same things? Do you see what I see? And ask questions like, is your red like my red? We Are All Wonder One Wide Sky by Deborah Wiles with pictures by Andrea Stiegmeier. This is a really simple counting book. Um, one wide sky, two clouds glide by, three songbirds sail the air, four fir trees over there, but the songbirds are in Paris and the fir trees are in Norway and the five lanterns on the page after that are in China. Um, there's a lot of really thoughtful diversity included in the artwork in this book as they sit under one wide sky. Beautiful, beautiful picture. It's very inclusive. And also Taking Time by Joe Loring Fisher. I really enjoy using this one with preschoolers. It focuses on children in different parts of the world, taking time to appreciate tiny wonders. You can see this little girl here is holding a seashell to her ear. And this child on the back of the camel is holding a camel toy, taking time to contemplate the journey as we roam. 
um, each of the illustrations goes to a different part of the world and each of the children has a tiny little token, an object that they're holding, like the bell of the color of their dog or a pine cone. And on the last page of the book, all the children have met and they are playing with each other's tokens and toys. It's very sweet. And there's also a lot of um, educational material on the publisher website for this one, Taking Time. Wonder Walkers, you can see that beautiful award on the front of that for the pictures. This is by Misha Archer. Um, and this is about two curious kids of color that embark on a wonder walk and they let their imagination soar as they look at the world in a whole new light and ask wonderful questions like, are shells the shore's necklace? And is the ocean the world's bath? Do mountains have bones? Are the forests the mountains fur? So it's just a wonderful way to explore the beautiful world around us. And um, of course, those past couple examples were ones that incorporate many parts of the world, but there are also wonderful picture books that focus on just certain parts of the world. If you wanna dig into a specific culture, this is one I used at Storytime yesterday. Um, actually, it's called Golden Domes and Silver Lanterns, a Muslim book of colors. And uh, this is by Hannah Khan, and it's illustrated by Merdok Tamini. Red is the rug dad kneels on to pray, facing toward Mecca five times a day. Blue is the hijab my mom likes to wear. It's a scarf she uses to cover her hair. So you can hear the beautiful cadence of the rhyming couplets. Um, and that couple also wrote a book called Crescent Moons and Pointed Minarets, which is a Muslim book of shapes. So those are really, really nice. Deep in the Sahara by Kelly Kinane and Hoda Hadidi. This is set in Muslim West Africa. More than all the stars in the desert sky, Lala wants to wear a malafa so she can be beautiful like her mother, mysterious like her older sister, and a fine lady like her cousin. This is a really sweet book. And there are many other examples if you would like um, something about a similar head-wearing culture. Mami's Kimar is good. And The Proudest Blue is an award-winning newer book that is about a girl wearing a hijab in America. Um, if you want to travel to India, I used this one really recently as well. This is called The Wheels on the Tuk Tuk. Kabir and Sarishta Sigal are a mother-son duo that write many books together that we use in a lot of our programs. And um, they work with a lot of different illustrators. The Wheels on the Tuk Tuk is illustrated by Jess Golden. And it's sung to the tune of the wheels on the bus, but the people in the street jump on and off, on and off. And the tuk-tuk riders eat pop a dop a dums pop a dop a dums And then, of course, the wheels on the tuk-tuk do go round and round, and their wipers go swish, swish, swish. But a lot of it is really fun. Um, the same uh, Segal team wrote this book, Thread of Love. And this is illustrated by Zara Gonzalez Wang. And Thread of Love is about, um, it's sung to the tune of Frere Jaca, and it's about Rakshabandan with illustrations, illustrations, haha, <laughs> well, illustrated instructions on the back for how to make a raki, which is what this girl is making her brother on the cover. And the illustrations, just to give you a sampling, go like this, while you're dreaming, while you're dreaming, I will start, I will start making you a raki, making you a raki. Thread of love, thread of love. It's a really lovely little book about the celebration of brothers and sisters in Indian culture. And again, from Kabir and Suresh Sasigal, but this time illustrated by Vashti Harrison as Festival of Colors, which is about the festival of Holi and children, Chintu and Minthu, who are gathering and pressing flowers for that celebration and festival. If you would like to incorporate some Spanish into your experience, Susan Middleton Elia has written several wonderful books that seamlessly incorporate Spanish words into an otherwise English story. Um, and she also works with a lot of different illustrators. The Three Billy Goats Buenos that you have here is illustrated by Miguel Ordonez. And I'll just give you a sense of her language really quickly by reading the first pages. Um, there once were three goats, a brotherly trio. They needed to crisscross a fast moving Rio, but under the bridge lived a grumpy gigante with tootsies as big as a small elefante. So you can see that um, from context clues, most of the Spanish would make sense even to a not Spanish speaking audience, um, but it's really nice to include a bilingual story in any of your programs, or if you're just sitting with your kiddo in your lap and want to brush up on your Spanish. Susan Middleton Elia also did Rubia and the Three Osos, which of course is Goldilocks and the Three Bears, and she also did La Princesa and the Pea, which is illustrated by Juana Martinez Nia. Um, La Princesa and the Pea is Peruvian, and so the animals and the uh, architecture and the clothing and everything incorporated in that book is from Peru. And you can see in Rubia and the Three Osos that papel picado across the top, that artwork that's from Mexico. 
She did Little Roja Riding Hood with Susan Guevara, and she also did La Madre Goose, which is nursery rhymes for Los Niños, which is also illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal. So they've partnered a couple of times. If you're interested in the Native American experience, you could try Fry Bread. This won a bunch of awards, as you can see there on the cover. This is a Native American family story written by Kevin Noble Maillard and illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal. And so this is Fry Bread is time on weekdays and holidays, supper or dinner, powwows and festivals, moments together with family and friends. Fry Bread is art and Fry Bread is everything. Also celebrating the Native American experience is We Are Water Protectors by Carol Lindstrom, illustrated by Michaela Goad, that won the Caldecott for Best Illustrations in 2021. And it tells the story of a young Ojibwe girl and her people as they take on the black snake of an oil pipeline threatening their way of life. Excellent for slightly older children. Also for slightly older children, Eyes That Kiss in the Corners by Joanna Ho, illustrated by Dung Ho, is a love letter that celebrates Asian eyes. It's a lyrical ode to loving oneself, self-acceptance, and having confidence. It features four different generations of women in the story, and they all have eyes that kiss in the corners and glow like warm tea. And the same author-illustrator team did a companion piece for Asian boys that's called Eyes That Speak to the Stars. If you want a tearjerker for slightly older kiddos, Lubna and Pebble is amazing. It's an unforgettable story that subtly addresses the refugee crisis. This is by Wendy Medor, and the pictures are by Daniel Igneus. Lubna and her father arrive by boat on a strange beach to live in a city of tents, and Lubna's best friend is Pebble. You can see her drawing a face on it right there. It listens to her stories, and when a new boy comes, she must decide if friendship means giving up the one item that gives her comfort during a time of utter uncertainty. Beautiful, beautiful book about refugees. And multicultural tales, of course, can also take place in America. This is Thank You, Omu uh, by Oge Mora. Um, she's a child of Nigerian immigrants who moved to Ohio, and the story is about Omu who cooks a stew and shares it with the neighbors. It's a really lovely way to highlight the diversity that can exist in any single building in an American city. And I would be sad myself if I didn't feature my very favorite book that I read when I do world travel programs for ages uh, for grades K through five, ages five to 11, I always try and read the book Do Is Talk by Carson Ellis. This was a Caldecott honor book when it came out. And you can see it's a bug story right there. They're looking at a plant in the opening page. One of them is pointing and saying, Do Is Talk, which means what is that? And the other one is saying, Manazut, which means I don't know. And they continue and they're speaking this bug language, Do Is Talk. I think it's Onk Plonk. So, and I ask the kids, you know, what do you think that is? And they say plant. So we know plonk is plant. Um, and then the plonk grows and we're discovering more words in this language. It, on this page, it flowers. And so I ask the children, what is that? They say flower, but everyone's pointing all the bugs and saying, and so, gladden boot. so we know the word gladden boot means flower. So we're translating as we go along. And at the end, ask the children what language they think that that book was in that we all understood without speaking that language. And they guess and guess, but finally let them in on the secret that it's a totally made up language that Carson Ellis invented just for this story. So this is a really nice book um, written in a made up language to show how we can understand each other, even if we do not speak the same mother tongue. So uh, to move on to a little bit older books, um, what I wanted to talk about own voices, uh, which is a hashtag, a term that was coined in 2015 by young adult author Corinne Doivis. And it refers to books about characters from underrepresented and marginalized groups in which the author shares the same identity. And so the writing of uh, own voices book is inspired by the author's own experiences and is written from their own perspective. And it's usually divided into some categories, African-American voices, Native American voices, or American Indian voices. Asian and Pacific Islander voices, Hispanic and Latino voices, LGBTQIA plus stories, and um, disabilities and chronic illnesses. So now we're not going to talk about the last two, but we are going to talk about a couple books in uh, the first several categories. So a great example of an own voices book would be Front Desk by Kelly Yang, which the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library just featured as one of our community read titles. It's about a 10-year-old Chinese immigrant named Mia who manages the front desk of the Calavista Motel, five miles from Disneyland, and tends to its guests. And it is written by 
Kelly Yang, who is a Chinese woman who immigrated to America when she was six years old, grew up in Southern California, where she and her parents worked in different motels. So an own voices book doesn't have to be that straightforward, but that's a really good example. Another example might be A Friend Divided by Ernesto Cisneros. I love this cover so, so much. You can ask third to fifth grade kids to tell you what the story is probably about based on that cover, and they can guess with great accuracy. Efren worries about his parents. He's American born but his parents are undocumented immigrants. And one day his worst fears come true when his ama, that's his mother, is deported across the border to Mexico, leaving him to take care of his younger siblings. And so Ernesto Cisneros, that is not his story, but he was born and raised in Santa Ana, California, and is Latino and is writing about a boy that shares many commonalities with him. Another example would be something like When the Stars Are Scattered, it won a ton of awards. This is a graphic novel that's co-written by Victoria Jameson and Omar Mohammed, um, which is the man that the story is about. Omar and his nonverbal younger brother, Hassan, spent most of their lives in uh, Dadaab, which is what we're looking at right now, a refugee camp in Kenya. Life is really hard there. There's never enough food. It's very dull and there's no access to the medical care that Omar's nonverbal brother needs. So when Omar has the opportunity to go to school, he knows it might be a chance to change their future, but it does also mean leaving his brother every day. And so it is told by the Somali refugee who lived that story and interpreted by Victoria Jamison as a graphic novelist. So we do not have time to dig into a bunch of these. I'm literally going to throw a bunch of titles and faces at you, but just to give you a sense of how many multicultural stories there might be, um, these are all going to be chapter books moving forward. So African-American Voices, Jason Reynolds is amazing. Look Both Ways is a book that we've featured as a community read in past years. And it's um, 10 different stories told from the viewpoints of 10 different kids on their walk home from school on the same day. What Lane by Tori Maldonado. He is Black Latino, and this is a Black Lives Matter story about a um, mixed race child. Bayou Magic by Jewel Parker Rhodes is about a girl spending time with her grandmother down on the Louisiana Bayou. Um, I Can Go by Nettie Korafor. This is a fantasy. Um, and it is um, about, um, it's set in the real world of contemporary Nigeria, uh, which looks like that. Clean Getaway by Nick Stone um, is about a boy named Scoob going on a cross-country trip with his Jima, his grandma. Uh, and it touches on the Negro Traveler's Green Book, which I didn't know was a thing um, until I read this book. And it is um, a, a, a travel guide that was published during the segregation era in the United States that identified businesses, restaurants, gas stations that would accept African-American customers. So it's a really interesting revisitation of that experience. Um, and then we're going to talk about some Rick Riordan Presents books. So Rick Riordan, who wrote the Percy Jackson books, which may be familiar to most of us, um, which deal with Greek mythology, he decided to start a company that is geared toward publishing great middle grade authors from underrepresented cultures and backgrounds to let them tell their own stories inspired by the mythology and folklore of their heritage. And one of these is Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky. Kwame Mbalia has been to Imaginon. He has been to the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library. He was one of our Epic Fest authors this last year. And it um, goes into the mythology of West African gods like Niame and Anansi. And it's mixed with African-American folk legends like John Henry and Br'er Rabbit. Um, it's a chapter book and a graphic novel. Um, these are some great books by Renee Watson. Uh, she does a lot of realistic fiction about kids in um, places more than others. It takes place in Harlem. The, uh, the New Kid series by Jerry Craft is graphic novels um, that are also modern realistic fiction. And Tanita Davis has some great stuff too, if you're looking for African-American voices. And Jacqueline Woodson is absolutely extraordinary. Her biography is called Brown Girl Dreaming and is written entirely in poetry. And Harbor Me is a really great read as well. So to plow through some Native American or American Indian voices, I can make this promise by Christine Day. Um, Christine Day is a enrolled citizen of the Upper Skagit tribe, and it's about a girl who thinks that she doesn't know who her family is and finds a photograph hidden in the attic that gives her clues into her past. Um, the Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian is one of the top most banned books of all time and has been for many, many years. It's by Sherman Alexie. 
It's about a boy named Junior who's a budding cartoonist growing up on the Spokane Indian Reservation and decides to leave and go to uh, an all-white farm town high school where the only other Indian is the school mascot. It's about his own experience growing up as a Spokane Native American. Um, this is another Rick Riordan Presents book, and this one is about the Navajo mythology of things like the changing woman, the rock crystal boy, the glittering world, and the hero twins. The author is half Black and half Spanish Indian, and she's okay, a Wingo Pueblo um, citizen. How I Became a Ghost is by Tim Tingle, and he is a member of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. It's a Trail of Tears story written from the viewpoint of a ghost. Indian No More is written by an Umpqua author about the Grand Ronde tribe's reservation where family are forced from their homeland by their government. Res Dogs is written in verse, so poetry, by Joseph Bruce Shack. And it's really interesting because it is about a girl who's staying with her grandparents on their reservation when all of a sudden all travel shuts down. It's the coronavirus pandemic. So this is a book that takes place in recent history about what it would be like to be a non-reservation child who is um, on a reservation when the coronavirus happens. And if you want a collection of intertribal stories for kids, Ancestor Approved is a whole bunch of stories written by a whole bunch of Native American authors. And it takes place all at a powwow in a high school gym. To go on and touch on some Asian and Pacific Islander voices, and again, we're sticking with chapter books for this part, there is More to the Story by Haina Khan, which is a retelling of Little Women that centers on Muslim Pakistani sisters who live in Georgia. Um, Unsettled by Reem Faruqi is about a girl who moves from Karachi, Pakistan to Peachtree City, Georgia, and all she wants to blend is to blend in, but she can't help but stand out um, until she meets another girl who covers her skin, but for a totally different reason. That's unsettled. Other Words for Home by Jasmine Varga um, is about a girl who has to leave her family in war-torn Syria and um, uh, Jude and her mother are sent to the Cincinnati to live with relatives. So it's about that experience. Um, and then we have The Dragon Warrior by Katie Zhao. This is about a girl who um, turns out she might be the heaven breaker, a legendary warrior destined to lead a dragon army against demons. And Katie is a Chinese American author. Um, Stand Up Yumi Chung by Jessica Kim. On the outside, Yumi Chung suffers from shy girl problems, a perm gone wrong, kids calling her Yumi meat because she smells like her family's Korean barbecue restaurant, but in the inside, she's ready for her Netflix special. Blackbird Fly is written by Erin Entrada Kelly, who is an immigrant from the Philippines. And when 12-year-old Filipino Apple Yenko is voted the third ugliest girl in school, her life falls apart. Music is her only escape. All she needs is enough money to buy a guitar and then she could change herself and her life forever. She is sure. The Bridge Home by Padma Venkatraman. Um, this is about two homeless runaway sisters who find shelter and friendship with homeless boys in the teeming streets of Chennai, India. And they live under abandoned bridge and they scavenge the city's trash heaps together. It's inspired by the author's time spent in India working with the children there. The Gauntlet by Karuna Riazi is one of the, she's one of the first Muslim Americans to publish a chapter book for kids with characters like her. And it's kind of like Jumanji, if you've seen that movie or read that book, but it's about kids who enter a board game called The Gauntlet of Blood and Sand, which is ancient and dangerous and takes its players as prisoners. So to talk about some Hispanic and Latino voices, we're going to talk about the first rule of punk by Celia C. Perez. On her first day at a new school, 12-year-old Maria Luisa violates the school dress code with her punk rock look, but her dad tells her, remember, the first rule of punk is be yourself. So she starts a band of misfits to stand up to the anti-punk school administration. Ghost Squad by Clarabel Ortega. Um, she often writes about her Dominican heritage, and this book is compared to the movie Coco. The back of the book just says, be prepared, respect the dead, always have a cat. And the only thing I'm going to share about this book is that there's a tubby tabby cat named Chunk. And I think that's the greatest cat name ever. Marcus Vega doesn't speak Spanish. This is by Pablo Cartaya. He's Cuban and he spent a great deal of time in Puerto Rico. Um, and it's about a boy who is six feet tall, 180 pounds, premature mustache. When you look like that in the eighth grade, you're both a threat and a target. And after a fight at school leaves Marcus facing suspension, his mom decides he needs a change and whisks him away to Puerto Rico for a week with relatives that they don't remember and some that they've never met. But Marcus can't focus, focus knowing that his father, who walked out of their life 10 years ago, is somewhere on the island. San, oh, that's Puerto Rico, a picture of Puerto Rico. 
Um, Santiago's Road Home is by Alexandra Diaz. She's the daughter of Cuban refugees. And it is about a boy who lives in Chihuahua, Mexico with his abusive abuela. And one day he decides he's not going to go home. He meets a kind woman named Maria Dolores and her daughter, Alegria. And they invite him to come with them to El Otro Lado, the other land. So they're going to Mexico. That's um, Chihuahua. Mexico, uh, and here is the border to America, and it's a, an adventure story. Sal and Gabby Break the Universe is another Rick Riordan Presents book. You can see that logo at the top. Whenever you see that, you know it's going to be about mythology. Um, and so this is about Cuban mythology and culture. And also Rick Riordan Presents The Storm Runner by J.C. Cervantes. Um, this is a take on Mayan mythology, and it's full of magic and monsters and gods and ancient prophecies. And there is an example of the volcano that might be in the Storm Runner. And if you want to read a bunch of stories about young Latinas, you could try Us in Progress by Lulu Delacre. Um, the Hero Next Door is a collection. If you don't want to just experience one voice, if you want to experience many cultures and many voices at the same time, this is a We Need Diverse Books anthology. And this is by, edited by um, Bemi Rude Perkovic, who has also been to Imagine On as one of our Epic, Epic Fest authors. She is absolutely fantastic. Um, and this is stories about all of their heroes. And then I'm going to plow through these because I am running short on time, but quick travel picks. So um, if you want to go to Norway, you could try Brown by Hakon Ovreas about an elementary school age boy who decides he's a superhero of paint. If you want to know what it would be like to run with the goats and gather aprons full of wildflowers under the Switzerland sun and the Alps, you can maybe try Heidi by Joanna Speary. What about an African village where the children gather nuts in the trees and drink the, keep the soft drinks cool in the river? You could try the number one car spotter, best in the village, maybe in the world by Atenuke. Um, what about a story uh, set in modern Metro Manila in the Philippines? In My Fate According to the Butterfly, Saab sees a black butterfly, an omen of death, and realizes she only has one week to live. A story about an American girl sent by her parents to vacation in Vietnam so she can learn more about her roots and she doesn't speak the language or the culture. You could try to listen slowly by Tana Lai. You want to know what it's like to be in an island in West Bengal when a tiger cub escapes from the nature reserve next door? Try Tiger Boy by Mitali Perkins. An adventure in Mongolia it goes against all tradition for Aislu to train an eagle because among the Kazakh nomads, only men can fly them, but she is secretly training an orphan baby eagle and has to get its trust before people find out the stand on the sky by Aaron Bow. And one of my favorites, um, this one takes place in, um, Kara is 11 years old and she lives in the poor section of the city in Shenzhen, China. In China, in this book, families are limited to only one child, and boys are more valuable than girls. The only thing worse than being a girl is a girl with a deformity. And Kara has a deformed right hand, so her parents abandoned her next to a garbage dump as an infant, but she was rescued and taken in by an elderly American woman. This is Red Butterfly, and it's told entirely in poetry. So the last thing I'm going to point out today if we're talking about multicultural tales in honor of Dia at this Parent Lunch and Learn is to go to the website if you would like more resources of We Need Diverse Books. It's diversebooks.org. And they're a nonprofit that tries to promote literature that reflects and honors the lives of all young people. Um, and they have many resources, um, everything from locating diverse owned bookstores to diversity reading lists that are curated by the Children's Book Council. So that is what I have to share with you today. Thank you so much for being here with me and with the library. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day celebrating Dia and Multicultural Books.